Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll just give it a few seconds here to let people kind of trickle in and then we'll get started in, a, in 30 seconds or so. Johnny, nice to see you as always. Good to see you too, man. Awesome. Yeah, excited for this. Yeah, me too. Do I find you down in uh, Tennessee today? I'm actually in uh, San Francisco right now. Flew, flew here to SF from Nashville uh, for a week of hanging out with the team. So um, yeah, oh, nice. hanging out in the WeFunder office near the Palace of Fine Arts. Very cool. That's awesome. Good stuff. Have oh. you been to our office here? I think I came to the office before this office. Yeah, um, in Noe Valley. Yeah, this, is, this office is, um, is epic, man. You got to come and see it sometime soon. Yeah, I'd love to. It's a house, right? Uh-huh, yeah. A literal house. Well, yeah. talk about community. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the literal home of the community round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think we can definitely get started. We have a pretty good uh, showing coming on here. Um, so, Johnny, thank you so much for kind of taking time. Uh, I know, you know, this wasn't a heavily planned event by any means, but when I saw kind of the community round stuff, taking off. I was really excited about it. And I'll be honest, at first, I was like, oh, I think it's kind of like a PR thing to kind of change the branding of the equity crowdfunding space, which I thought we needed. But I was like, oh, it's kind of, but then when I saw what you guys did, I got really excited about it and thought, wow, that's actually very innovative and really smart for our industry. Um, so I'm excited to get into it. Glad to have this webinar and have so many of you get to join and, and listen in a bit. Um, and definitely near the end, you know, we'll keep it to 30, 40 minutes. Uh, I'll definitely open it up to questions from the crowd if anyone has any questions, but just real from the quick community from the community, Chris, from the community. That's <laughs> absolutely right. Thank you for that. Um, before we uh, before we we hop in here, just for those that that don't know, I, I think many of you know, you know, I'm the founder of King's Crowd. But Johnny, if you don't mind just giving a little bit of background on yourself and then we could roll from there. Yep. So Johnny Price, I'm the VP of fundraising at WeFunders. So I've been here for four years, which is a few years into the journey. WeFunders founded back in 2012, but um, my, me and my team are trying to find founders, awesome founders that um, you know want to want to raise uh, from their community on on WeFunder. Um, before this, I ran the US team at Kiva.org for seven years, a nonprofit based here in San Francisco. Um, and before that, started my career in management consulting um, at Oliver Wyman. Uh, I'm from the UK originally, lived in SF for 10 years, um, and a couple of years ago moved to Nashville, where my wife is from. Um, we have three young kids now, so uh, and she's from Nashville, so we're, we're back there now um, and uh, having a lot of fun in, in Music City. Amazing. That is really, really cool. I would definitely visit you in San Francisco, but I think I even more prefer coming to see you in, uh, in the Music City and checking that out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll hit the honky tonks of broadway next time you're in town man oh uh, that sounds fantastic so you know we founder has been very successful in recent years i'd say in getting some pretty big names that kind of hop on and do a community round so the first thing i want to talk to you about you know and, and probably the name that many of you know or, or maybe don't know is Mercury Bank last year they raised over 100 million dollars from Andreessen Horowitz and Co2 and I think maybe one or two other major names, and then came and listed at the same terms uh, on the platform, on WeFunder, and allowed their community to invest. I think they ended up selling out $5 million in like four seconds, and then it took a while to figure out who was in line and all of those good things, but sold out very, very quickly. So my, my first question for you is just, what have you been doing to excite some of these bigger companies that I think traditionally maybe wouldn't have considered doing a community round to get excited and want to utilize a WeFunder platform. Yeah, I mean, I think the SEC was very instrumental in, in helping make our job a lot easier, right? So um, as you know, the SEC made some rule changes to regulation crowdfunding, which is the exemption that we use um, to, to allow companies to run community rounds. Um, this exemption was, was rolled out initially in May 2016 as part of the Jobs Act. Um, and then it, the rules for five years were kind of not the best for founders. And so you could only raise a million dollars per year. Um, you couldn't use a special purpose vehicle to roll all investors to one line on the, on the cap table. Um, you know, it, you kind of had to file a form C before you started, started raising money. And so 
the rule changes that the FCC uh, rolled out in March of 2021 um, then were just basically a lot better for founders. So now you can raise 5 million, we can use an SPV, which is a pretty common instrument in, in early stage fundraising. And then the ability to launch a campaign and, and test in the waters like before you file a form C and get financials done um, made it just a lot more appealing, I think, to a founder like Imad at, at Mercury. Um, Breplet's a, a really good recent example, Levels. Um, and so, you know, that that just kind of made it made it a lot more interesting for them. And I think like WeFunder is is a company that really I would say is product led. Um, so we are trying to build the best, uh, you know, uh, product and infrastructure, the best investment structure, um, you know, the best kind of checkout flow for investors. And so we really kind of uh, have been iterating a lot on the product over the last decade, really. Um, and, and hopefully if we can deliver a better and better product experience, uh, then, you know, more, more really world-class founders are going to say, yeah, this is something I want to do. Um, so that's kind of on the product side. And then on the, on the positioning side and the community around thing is definitely part of this, right? Um, but, uh, it's just trying to communicate this message, right? That as as well as raising from VCs. This isn't an either or thing, as well as raising from the best uh, VCs in the world. Also open up part of every round to let your customers and community invest, you know, partly honestly, because that's kind of a good noble thing to do. And if you, you know, are going to build a big business and create wealth for a bunch of people, like wouldn't it be awesome to let your customers and community participate in, in that as well as some rich people? but maybe kind of more pragmatically because that is going to accelerate the growth of your company, right? Um, because if you recruit this army of thousands of brand ambassadors and thousands of evangelists and loyal customers, they're going to spend a higher share of wallet with you. They're going to churn less, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's, it's kind of the SEC helped uh, with the rules, building a better product and then communicating kind of firstly that this is a thing and then why you should do this. And I'm using these kind of two phrases right now, right? One is uh, delight your customers and two is engage your community, right? And so show me a startup founder that doesn't want to delight their customers. Everyone wants to do that. You know, one great way to delight your customers, let them get a piece of the action, let them invest in you, right? And then every startup founder wants to build stronger ties among their community, right? And what an awesome way to do that is to let your community invest um, in your company. So sorry, long-winded answer, but- Oh, uh, no, absolutely. And you know, it kind of makes me laugh because you know, you got all these Web3 junkies coming out and they're all like, oh, it's all about community and ownership and everyone's gonna own the internet. It's like, yeah, we've been at this for like a decade. <laughs> we've been working on yeah, this exact our CTO, problem. Our CTO the other day said that uh, we fund this Web3 without the crypto. Um, and it's the same principles, right? Love the principles. Exactly, exactly. Like more kind of decentralized, democratized ownership, more kind of community stakeholder ownership. That's awesome, you know? Um, and you can do that with crypto or you can do that without crypto. We fund is focused on doing it without crypto. And the reality is they're both securities and they're the exact same thing. From my perspective, that's, that's the reality that we all just need to agree on. Um, I think it's so cool. So one of my favorite things about the community round that you launched was this idea that we take testing the waters, which is typically the company saying, you know, maybe we should go and look at whether or not our customers and our community would be interested in investing in us. And you flip that on its head and you say, hey fans, why don't you tell them that you want to invest in them? And now people have the opportunity to go to a page for Stripe or SpaceX or any number of these huge companies that would be really exciting to be involved with and say, do you want to invest? If so, vote with your dollars and, and not your actual dollars, but say, hey, I would give you $5,000, $10,000, $100, whatever it is. And then the company could eventually see, oh, wow, our community would love to be a part of this thing. Maybe we should open it up to them. And I think that's going to bring in a whole slew of really, really interesting companies. So I'd love to hear if you know and can share how you guys came up with that idea. Yeah, definitely not my idea. Much smarter people in the team than me. Um, I, I think this was an idea that our CEO had, maybe Nick Tomarello, um, who is, you know, very kind of close to all aspects of WeFunders product. Um, it may have been an engineer on the team, I'm not sure. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, a big part of the challenge, as you know, with what we're doing in this industry right now is trying to get the word out, right? So this is an unconventional way of raising capital, right? Most startup founders are raising through Reg D um, from accredited investors only. So this regulation crowdfunding thing, these community rounds are new. And so a big part of the challenge is education. Um, and so we saw, we, came, we whoever we on our team is, um, came up with this idea of, you know, can we try to grab founders' attentions with this um, petition uh, product where, yeah, if like, you know, 50,000 of us go to communityround.com forward slash SpaceX and, you know, tell Elon that we want to invest in SpaceX, Elon seems to be the sort of person that might like if, if enough, there's enough of a groundswell, right? Enough people kind of bugging him on Twitter <laughs> that he might be like, sure, why not? You know, let's do a reggae plus, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> certainly a reg, a reg CF um, and let thousands and thousands of people invest in SpaceX and benefit from the wealth that we're going to create with SpaceX as well as VCs. Um, just because, you know, uh, he, um, he seems like a guy that is, you know, for the people and of the people. Um, so, so this idea is a way of basically getting the word out about community rounds, getting founders' attention, and enabling, you know, so, so their customers that really love the product and would love to invest, they don't need to wait until the founder decides to do it. They can try to accelerate this and they can have more agency and, you know, kind of demanding this like uh, investment in this company that they're a huge fan of and would love to, would love to be a part of. I, I love that. And I do think that at the end of the day, every good entrepreneur uh, recognizes that capital is a commodity. And if they realize, or maybe they just weren't thinking about it before, you just think the only path is a traditional path. But if you look over here and you go, wait a second, there's 3,000 of our customers who want to give us $20 million. Maybe we should explore how this whole thing works. <laughs> that sounds I'm pretty not, good to me. I'm going to push back a little. I'm curious to, to understand what you mean by that. Um, I always thought capital is less of a commodity. And like, th there is value that, like, I remember one example is like when Andreessen, um, I think Andreessen set up um, Elon interviewing Vlad on uh, on uh, Crunchbase, uh, yeah. not not Crunchbase, um, Clubhouse, uh, around the kind of Robin Hood uh, GameStop thing, and like that. I I think Andreessen like basically set that conversation up, which drove like a ton of users acquisition for um for Clubhouse, right? As as one example, right? Um, and so, and my vision for we fund their community rounds is like in a different direction. The capital we provide is not a commodity, right? But like, sure. And and for, for Mercury, right? They didn't need the 5 million. They raised the 120 million Series B, as you said. You know, for them, it, it wasn't about like, oh, we need this 5 million. It was actually, you know, we think it's going to be really good for our business to let thousands of our customers and they only opened it up to their customers. But if you're a Mercury customer, you get to invest in us. And so then it's actually less about the capital as a kind of undifferentiated commodity. It's more like, actually, this capital is, is awesome and valuable and different to other capital because the, the differentiator with, with community rounds is you recruit this army of even more now passionate. They already loved the product. Um, to the extent that they believed in it and wanted to invest in it, but now they love it even more. Now they're going to tell more people about it. Um, and so for me, like I, our hope is, and we've got a long way to go, right? And there's many really cool product features that we're working on that are going to be rolled out over the coming years, um, months and years. But it's like, you know, that's the vision is how can we do more and more to say when you raise a million dollars and we fund it from a thousand people, average investments, a thousand bucks, now this army of a thousand people can do really cool things for you. Vampir is a company that raised on WeFunder, V-A-M-P-R, uh, LinkedIn for creatives, um, just closed around on WeFunder. And they call it their investor army. They basically branded it. You can sign up to be in their investor army and they give you challenges to do that you can help the business. So they're trying to hack it themselves. But like, what are the product features that WeFunder can build so that when, when a startup founder, you know, raises from thousands of their customers, we can turn that into this huge force that can 
connect them to the enterprise. This can be for B2B SaaS companies as well, right? Trying to connect to this enterprise customer. Well, probably one of the thousand people that invested in you can help make an intro. Trying to hire an engineer. Like probably one of your thousand people can can help share the job description on their LinkedIn or connect you with a friend of theirs that's looking for a gig. You know, it doesn't just need to be about people are going to be, you know, spending more money with you. There's a bunch of other ways now that this army can can help you grow the business. Um, that's the future. And that's kind of the value, I would argue, of, of the capital that we're trying to provide with Community Lab. Yeah, no, capital doesn't necessarily have to be a commodity. I would argue that probably most of us would struggle to think of any other VC examples of them really providing value, which is why historically, I think it's a commodity. <laughs> it's what, I appreciate, what firm I appreciate is willing to your provide kind of, uh, I appreciate your, uh, you know, kind of uh, just poking there. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, there's a few questions coming in and I, I want to start getting to them because some of these are really interesting. Um, one question that I really like here is how do you get your community round results in front of founders like SpaceX and Stripe? Yeah, TBD. Uh, we learned this <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. It's been cool, like some founders um, have just kind of stumbled upon the petition, right? Like if you're, if you're, you know, you want to invest in Front, right? And, uh, you know, so you kind of start a petition for Front, right? And then you tag uh, Mathilde uh, in the tweet, right? then maybe she sees it. And maybe if hundreds and thousands of people are doing it, then maybe, you know, maybe it's her or maybe it's someone else at front, like sees it and then it goes around the company Slack. So, um, and there's probably, you know, things that we can do to amplify it and, and to try to, to, to get in front of the founder. But, um, you know, we, it's still super early. So I don't think we figured out um, how we're going to do that yet. Um, but hopefully it's happening organically. And then Mateo is like <laughs> coming to us and say, hey, wait, all these people are saying they want to invest. Can, can we talk about how we might make that happen? That'd be nice. <laughs> I imagine uh, I imagine you've made them, I'm, I'm trying to remember now, I've, I've gone on the pages, but that they're all shareable, right? I could tweet the pages and things like that. Yeah. There's going to have to be some, <laughs> uh, some tagging done by some of the investor army that we have here. For, uh, yeah. for some of those companies. I know there's a few that I'd be interested to, to see go live with offerings. That would be really cool. Yeah. Um, I think a really good question when it comes to community round. So you're talking about lots and lots of people back in your company. Um, does it cost the same to process one $10,000 investment versus 10 $1,000 investments? Um, we have uh, some small variable costs as a company right around uh uh investments so um for example like every investment has you know a certain percentage of investments will have a customer service email which takes our team time to respond to that email and um so you know there's some very very small variable transaction costs but um for the most part um it's it's pretty you know, it's pretty, pretty similar in costs if it's 10, 10, 1k investments versus one 10k. Yeah. Generally my experience. So we've raised almost $7 million to date, um, historically from, I think a little over 4,000 investors for a round of funding. And I, I mean, I can tell you whether it's a hundred thousand or the 1000, the only things that sometimes affect it is if there's like a credit card charge, if they're using a credit card for certain things, um, there might be a certain fee associated with it, but typically, it's pretty standardized and not the founder doesn't burden some, some new costs that you don't know about. Right. Um, really, really interesting. Um, you know, in the last couple of weeks, even have you started to receive more inbounds where it's easier to have a discussion about doing a community round than it has been before? Yeah, I think so. You know, th there's certainly been a, an increase in like inbound applications to WeFunder. I think people are seeing this. You know, that was a really nice kind of marketing um, push around it. Um, and then the other thing, yeah, for me, there's kind of two ways that I think this drives growth, right? One is inbound. So one is like, you know, people see this, founders see this, say, wow, that seems like something I want to be a part of. This seems like kind of more prestigious maybe than, you know, um, the kind of equity crowdfunding of 2019. Um, so we're getting more inbound. But then the other thing is like, I'm sharing this website with founders, right? If a founder yeah. is like considering WeFunder, then, you know, there's many factors that they're considering, right? What other capital do I have available? 
you know, how much work is this going to be? How expensive is this going to be? And a big part of it is like, is this prestigious? Is this something that like, you know, world-class, like venture backed, like hockey sticking best in the world yeah. companies are doing. And so it's like, yeah, here's community around.com. Here's some examples. Like, this is what it's all about. Um, and so for me, kind of repositioning equity crowdfunding as, as community around is, is like, you know, um, this is going to increase the confidence of the best founders in the world to, to do this, right? And say, yeah, this actually, this sounds really cool. You know, there's, there's more and more success stories of Andrews and Horowitz, Horowitz backed startups going this route. Um, and so, uh, yeah, for me, the community around um, website and kind of focus is, is also going to increase conversion and confidence of founders who, who want to launch on WeFunder. Well, something that I would highly recommend to folks, if you are a founder that's listening into this, um, testing the waters historically has been a, just a little bit of a pain, not a huge thing, but it is a pain. You still have to go through some paperwork and file some things. And it's not the most fun process to get your, your testing the waters set up. WeFunder has now done all the work for you. So if you are a company, look up your community round page. Um, hopefully you can find it. And if you find it, then you could just start sharing that with you know people that you want to invest and friends and family and people you know and on your newsletter list or whatever and see if you could generate interest in in your offering without really having to do anything in many ways it's taking all the work out of a potential testing the waters and letting you just try the thing out and see if you can get anybody excited about your company and that's like that's really cool i mean you've made it extremely simple to at least Chris, test welcome. It out. Welcome to the WeFunder marketing team, man. It's great to have you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this question here. Uh, do you see the community round becoming the standard communication messaging or Reg CF rounds, or will it stay a WeFunder branded thing? I don't know if you saw the uh, tweet exchange I had with Republic on, I think it was on the day that we launched, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I basically tweeted at Republic and I was like, Republic is like the, the second best, I would say. <laughs> they would say first base, I would say second best uh, Reg CF platform. Um, and, uh, you know, I basically tweeted at them and say, hey, you know, hey guys, what do you think? Community around, like, are you in? Um, and, you know, they had, they had kind of a nice response. It was like a little bit of banter back and forth. It was cool. Um, but I think ultimately they said yes. Uh, because for me, like, you know, community around is just like, it's a better, you, you I think, feel this, right? It's a better term. Literally, I had a conversation with one founder yesterday who said they prefer equity crowdfunding. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, okay, you're the first person of like 500 people I've spoken with in the last <laughs> few weeks that thinks equity crowdfunding is better. It just, you know, VCs, angels, founders, everyone uh, is just like, oh yeah, that sounds so much better. So our assumption is that um, our competitors will will start using this term as well. Um, we we hope they do. Like this, I really do think this is a rising tide floats all boats thing. Um, I, honestly, like either way works for me. If if you know Republican Start Engine embrace community round, great. I think that's better for the industry. If they kind of stick with equity crowdfunding, then I, <laughs> I think uh, I'll be honest with you, Johnny. I don't think anyone is stuck with equity crowdfunding. I think we've all just moved to either set. So when the platforms approach us, I think the way that they just put it is, uh, do you want to raise money online from your fans and that kind of stuff? Um, and I've always defined, not always, but I've defined the last year and a half or two as online private markets because it did become such a bad term. Equity crowdfunding, yeah. it didn't have its crazy debut and people just wanted to write it off. And that, that's simply not true, but that's the connotation it had. So community round, I think, is a really clean Web three esque way of talking about what we've been building for years, which is really really cool. Um, and do know that you know something we're exploring and are excited by the idea of is eventually being able on King's Crowd along every live raise is to be able to track these these um, uh, community round raises where you know the, the testing the waters um, so that we can show people where there's interest in the market and and hopefully help the industry as a whole if if that's even more trans transparent and people can kind of follow that so. Uh, we're, we're certainly excited about that. Um, you had an amazing week last week. Tell us about some of the raises that went live and, and obviously must have filled up because I think we had the best week under regulation crowdfunding, maybe in the history of regulation crowdfunding. We have over 40 million already raised for the month of April. I'd imagine this ends up becoming the historically largest month in the history of Reg CF at 60 million maybe. Um, so tell us a little bit about last week and, and how things went. 
Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, the the week of the launch was our biggest ever week. Um, I asked I asked Howie on your team if uh, we if this was the biggest week ever for XCF, and sadly March fifteenth uh, pip, pipped it out. By the way, did you know that uh, the community round launch um, was on the ten year anniversary of uh, of uh, the Jobs Act? Yep, pretty I cool. sure did. <laughs> um, pretty cool symmetry. Um, but uh, yeah, so. I was hoping that that week would be the biggest ever week, but March 15th when the new laws went live and I think, uh, you know- It's just by hair. It was just by hair. But in, yeah, it was actually the biggest week, I believe, for any platform. So um, both in March 15th, both WeFunder and Republic had really big weeks. Um, last week, uh, we had a really, really big week. Um, and so I think it was the most by any platform in any given week, um, which is cool. Um, and then, yeah, April, I mean, for us, this is already the biggest month we've ever had. And we're 19 days into it. Shout out to my mom. It's her birthday today, uh, April 19th. Um, but yeah, so we still got like a third of the month left and already it's our biggest month. Um, and a lot of campaigns are closing over the next 10 days. Um, so that usually, you know, the deadline and the countdown there usually drives a bunch of investments. So yep. it's going to be a really, really exciting month. And hopefully we can kind of, you know, continue to springboard that into May, June, later this year. I like this question that came through. Um, how is community round data vetted? How does the company know the percentage of people who say they will invest will actually follow through? That's a great question. I would say, honestly, not very well. Like, I think there'll be a very, very high drop off, right? So when we do test and audit, because there's no validation, right? We're not taking any credit card information or we, we do create a user account. Um, so, you know, um, there's that and when the campaign, if and when the, the round launches on WeFunder, we have, we have the ability to email folks and say, hey, this, this company you, you petitioned, uh, you know, is now live. Um, but I think there'll be a very, very big drop off. Um, when you launch a kind of test and orders campaign on the WeFunder uh, website, um, it's a lot more solid because we are kind of, uh, taking, um, you know, payment information, we hold it as cash. Um, so that, so that's kind of a lot more concrete, but in terms of the petitions, I, I do think there'll be a big, a big drop off. And I mean, hopefully there'll also be a lot of new people, uh, who hear about it and people in the WeFunder audience that see it, that miss the petition. Right. And if the founder's doing it, then they're going to probably kind of market the, the actual campaign, you know, more than the petition. So I think there'll be a lot of new money as well. Um, but certainly a lot of the people that petition will drop out. Yeah. And I think, you know, in our historic experience of kind of watching, testing the waters, typically we'll see somewhere between 50% and 70% kind of convert mm -hmm. into actual investments. So the way that I kind of look at this is, this is a directional tool, right? If you have $5 million in indicated interest, you should probably launch around and you're probably going to get at least from that existing group, you know, one and a half, two and a half million, maybe a little bit more. If you, you know, have a million dollars in interest, I bet you if you launch campaign in that first couple of weeks, you're going to see, you know, 100, 250,000, maybe half a million, maybe more, but it's at least an indicator. You know, if you get 4,000 in, in interest and you send it to all your friends and family, well, maybe now is not the right time or, you know, maybe well, the story is not there. Well, think about this as well, right? Like imagine, let's say the SpaceX one, uh, SpaceX petition. I don't know what it's at right now. We should look it up uh, in the background. But, you know, um, however much interest there is now, right, in that, if Elon is like, you know what? Let's do this thing. It sounds like fun. And then he sends a tweet. Hey, anyone reading this tweet can invest in SpaceX. Here's the link then whatever they raise on the petition is going to explode, right? So that's what I mean. Like in some respects, some of the people that, that signed the petition will drop out. But right. hopefully there's, there's also a lot of times when actually you're going to raise way more than you did with the petition because now you're going to put your marketing muscle behind it. No, absolutely. And, and I think that's right. It's whatever is pledged, you know, you're going to get a smaller percent of that overall. But then, yeah, I would imagine you'd be kind of work, you know, Work in the marketing Working and all of those things. It. And by the way, Elon, if you are listening, <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like right now SpaceX has 1.9 million pledged from 429 fans. 
on the community round page if people are interested. I'll, uh, that's a that's a feature coming chat. with this, Chris. I can't I can't reveal it. I can't I can't. Uh, but watch this space. There's a feature coming with petitions that is gonna uh, knock your socks off. Uh, it's gonna be fun. You as soon as it's live, as soon as I get the permission from Nick to share, you'll be the first person I come to. But it's it's gonna be epic. It's chef's kiss. Terrific. Well. We will be sharing that with our community as soon as you let us know as well. Um, I really like this one, uh, question. You mentioned the emergence of SPVs, which is indeed a big deal. What is the additional cost for a startup to set that up as part of their campaign? Oh, beautiful question. Just give me a softball. We actually built the software in-house that we funded. That's a, another very awesome example of how we're a product-led company. Um, and so we built it in-house. And so um, there's actually no cost. So it, it costs you seven and a half percent of fee of uh, investment volume. That's our fee on WeFunder to run around with us. But that seven and a half percent includes the the creation of the SPV and the administration of the SPV in perpetuity, which is which is awesome. And is there any minimum, you know, if you only end up raising a hundred thousand dollars, like that you're going to charge them a minimum fee, or is it always seven and a half percent? Always seven and a half percent. Yeah, the minimum we allow on the site is 50K. Um, but if you pass 50K, then you can keep what you raise and we take seven and a half percent of that. Uh, another question coming in here. Will you be offering more preferred stock rounds? Safes make, a ver make me very nervous, especially when conversion to equity is solely at the company's discretion. Yep, um, we probably have about a third, a third, a third split between uh, safes, convertible notes and price rounds. Um, you know, our perspective is if you're a super early stage company, um, usually a convertible equity contract to save for a convertible note, it's just simpler, it's easier. You don't have to worry about paying a lawyer a significant amount to, to put together a subscription agreement. Um, we do like preferred stock versus common stock when we do subscription agreements. But at the end of the day, our perspective on WeFunder is like, we, we want to kind of find the contract that works for founders and investors and our mechanism for trying to protect investors is, or one of one of i think a really valuable one is that we have this lead investor feature where every company on WeFunder has a lead investor and typically they're putting in five percent of the round something like that it doesn't need to be that much but then if a company is raising a million dollars there's someone who's putting in 50k and it's the interest of the founder to have that lead investor be a sophisticated investor that really knows what they're doing, um, whose credibility is then lent to the round. Um, the lead investor votes for the shares of the individual investors in the SPV. So from the founder's perspective, they just have to collect one signature in the event of a vote. So it's administratively easy for them. But from the investor perspective, they actually have protection because there's an investor who's on the investor side of the table that knows what they're doing that's going to cast the vote on the in the interests of the investors. And so I think this lead investor mechanism is really nice, both for kind of looking out for investor interests over the lifetime of the company, but also hopefully setting the terms of the investment up front. And so at least you can look at that lead investor writing a 50K check on a safe with a valuation cap of 8 million. And of course, if anyone is not comfortable with a safe, um, and some people are not, then obviously you, you don't invest in saves and you can look for, you know, um, straight equity price rounds. Uh, we have some debt instruments on WeFunder as well. We look at Y Combinator um, and Y Combinator, I think is, you know, the best accelerator in the world, usually pretty regard, widely regarded as the best accelerator in the world. Every company coming out of YC is pretty much using a safe, um, right? And so we have the same YC uh, post money safe contract uh, that we use. Um, and for us, if, if these you know, best companies in the world are using safes, if we say no safes on WeFunder, we're going to lose access. Retail investors are going to lose access to those best companies. And, and for us, like what, what kind of building this industry is all about is making sure the best companies in the world are raising on WeFunder um, so that ordinary people get to invest in them as well as VCs and angels. And so if the best companies in the world are going to be using safes, we want to allow for safes on WeFunder. And I, you know, I usually have two recommendations on that too. Uh, one of them is self-serving, but the first one is uh, if, if you're looking at a safe, you know, you're right. Uh, nearly all of the major companies, especially the ones that raise, you know, venture backing, Y Combinator companies, they all use the safe. It's a very, very common instrument. 
the big thing you want to look out for is kind of like the buyback clauses where they could just buy you back at a premium rather than than have you convert to shares. Um, a lot of them don't have those provisions. And then I say the safe is actually a pretty solid instrument. If it has that, that's that's where you could have concern because you could end up taking the risk and not getting the payout that you're looking for. Beyond that, I, I'd say typically they're very, very standard. And the second thing is if you don't like uh, investing in those, then you certainly can go to King's Crowd. Uh, and use our sorting and filtering tools to find only common securities, preferred securities, and convertible notes that meet your needs. ABC, um, that's baby. Just, uh, ABC, Chris. <laughs> love that's it. right. <laughs> um, excellent. I, By the way, just to, just want to, Chris was the marketing team for, for WeFunder before, so just to be the marketing team for King's Crowd, super appreciate you and all the team. We've said this uh, on our podcast the other day, like, just you know we need more people like you kind of building this industry right the tools to allow investors to make decisions the bloomberg of the private markets like it's it's really cool and you you've caught the vision super early um and it's been awesome to see how you guys have grown and worked together you know over the last few years and hopefully going forward as well but um yeah and and as long as you keep keep showing we at the top of the leaderboard i'll keep uh, tweeting out the market <laughs> share market share stats <laughs> we we let the data tell the stories you know that that's all we can do but um but i'm happy you've been at the top and uh i have no doubt republican start engine will uh will start sharing when 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 they hit the top <laughs> um Bring one up. little update coming coming not too distant in the future is we realize how shareable the, the market data tables were uh, and how much people enjoyed sharing them. So we are making that look better uh, going forward so people can enjoy sharing them more and it, and it looks a little bit better. Um, before we head out here, first off, I'll just say to the crowd, you know, thank you very much for joining us. If you have any more questions, please submit them here in the next you know, 30 seconds or so, so we can make sure we get to them before we, we head off. Um, and just Johnny, anything, you know, any parting words, things you want people to know about the community round before uh, we wrap it up here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, check it out, communityaround.com. Um, if you're an investor, um, what we're trying to do is, you know, if there's a really cool startup that you want to that you want to uh, invest in, go and start a petition, share it around, and you know, hopefully, we can join the dots and um, pitch that founder. They might say no, but hopefully, they might say yes, and let you guys uh, invest um, alongside uh, the VCs that get to play. Uh, you know, that's what we're all about. We fund and know what you're about at King's Crowd. It's like, why should rich people have all the fun? Uh, you know, why should be investing in startups? The wealth that that creates be limited to uh, millionaires and billionaires. Let's let everyone have a piece of the action. Uh, so that's on the investor side. And then you mentioned this earlier, but yeah, if you're a founder um, and you want to, you know, learn more about potentially running a community round on WeFunder, would love to chat. Uh, so yeah, wefunder.com slash raise is, is the best place uh, to be there. And um yeah uh would love to would love to connect with anyone that's uh that wants to learn more and explore it um as a way of raising money for their startup terrific that's that's awesome well thank you so much johnny it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today and uh thank you all for listening in uh we'll work to get a recording out as well if people want to be able to listen back um but it, it's been an absolute pleasure and uh yeah i guess welcome to the age of community rounds let's do it cheers Chris. <laughs> take care bye now Bye.